Hello YouTube and welcome to Forward Finance. This is a new channel I've started. I'm going to be talking about investments, uh, mostly publicly traded stocks and stuff like that, give my analysis. Uh, just a little background on myself. I did formerly work in the financial services industry first as a power planner and then as a financial analyst. And I've had other financial related roles after that, although I've gone off on my own and done my own entrepreneurial thing. But it's always been a passion of mine. Um, I've been a long time investor. I've quite a lot of different pieces to my portfolio but common stocks is a very large part of that probably the majority right now so anyway today I wanted to talk about a stock that's been very popular uh, to talk about or very uh, hyped recently Palantir Technologies, Technologies ticker PLTR and um, there's a lot to talk about here this there's, there's, there's some caution I wanted to talk about it because I think uh, some people might be getting into it without understanding what they're investing in and I think you should always understand what your uh, the companies that you're purchasing or that you're investing in. So one of the things about Palantir is it it, it looks like a really good company. I am bullish on it long term. Uh, I've seen I've I've done a lot of research, done a lot of reading, looked at their platforms. Uh, you know Gotham and Foundry, their uh, government and uh, private sector products, software analytics and stuff like that. But there are some things that we need to look at here. So I wanted to bring them to your attention. Uh, Palantir has had quite a run-up since it went public in uh, not public exactly it wasn't an IPO it was a direct listing a little bit different uh, that's something we could talk about later or you can read on uh, direct listing versus an IPO so Palantir they have done uh, well um, on a revenue growth basis and that th there is a lot of lot to hope for for this company they are growing revenue very quickly their product, uh, they, they don't seem to have any real direct competitors. That's one of the bullish theses on it. Uh, there are some companies that people like to talk about in comparison to Palantir, such as Snowflake or Splunk, but they're not one for one comparable. It's very, it's very, it's it's difficult to find a really solid comparison company. They don't really have any exact peers like other companies in other industries do. So one of the things that we're going to look at here. So this is um, a summary of their third quarter 2020 um, results that was reported uh, f a couple of months ago. This is now January of 2021 and uh, the quarter four earnings will come out next month. But we can see that they are growing revenue so this is their revenue growth as compared to the 2019 quarter three. So according to them and the numbers pan out I, I do have the actual 10Q here from the SCC website. Uh, they did grow revenue on a year-over-year -year basis compared to the year ago quarter of almost 50 percent as you can see and they, they are they are citing here a non-gap operating income so that's a meaning a non-standard method of reporting accounting principles um, so that's something you know it's to take with a, a a grain of salt but it does look like they are getting closer to uh, profitability they um, and there, there's something else we'll talk about that in a moment and as for guidance so there there looks like they expect a little bit more than one billion of revenue for the full year 2020, which we will we will see uh, if they can confirm that um, in about a month from now when they report earnings for the quarter four 2020, and that also is a pretty high growth over 40 percent they are expecting compared to the full year 2019 results, and then for 2021 they are expecting growth um, to be over 30 percent, not giving a solid number there, but that is also quite good. Uh, so if so, let's if we assume that you know we'll get back to this. So that's assuming they're they're targeting a little over one billion of revenue for uh, 2020 full year. So that's that's one of the things. This is one of the points where we want to take a a pause and think about that because you know uh, when you're thinking about investing at this in this stock uh, as it is right now. It's uh, I'm recording this uh, the morning of January 6th before the market open um, on t Tuesday uh, Wednesday. So uh, how does this look in evaluation on a valuation standpoint? Because that's how we're going to try to decide um, when is a good entry point for this uh, any stock, and this company, this company included. So what we're going to look at, we're going to compare that to their their market cap. What is the total value of the shares as they're trading on the market right now? So if we go over here, I have over here the market the market cap as of yesterday's close, closing at uh, 24.60 is 40 a little over 40 billion dollars of market cap it's a lot it's a large cap it's a fairly uh, that's not a small valuation that's that's a it's classified as a large cap as you can see and so what that means is Palantir right now 
with this expected figure for the full year 2020 is trading at about 40 times revenue, 40 times sales. And that is not a small number. And the reason that that's you know, happening, that's not a low ratio. Uh, there are uh, somewhat comparable peers that are trading at lower price to sales, such as Splunk is trading at about 12 and a half sales, for example, although, as I said, it's not a fully direct comparison. So this could give some pause, you know, because when you're investing in a company, um, as Warren Buffett has said, it's, it's, it's better to invest in a, a good company at a great price than it is to invest in a great company at a good price, meaning the product or the, the thing that you're buying might be really great, you know, it might be very useful, it might be very effective, it might be very reliable, but everything has a price, everything has a, a value, and you don't want to be paying more than what it's worth, especially extremely a lot more than it's worth because then you're not getting a good deal. So that's what we we try to want to try to pay attention to here. So um, if you pay for, if you were to buy Palantir at the open tomorrow, for example, or in a few hours from now, as of this recording, um, would you be getting a good bang for your buck? Or is Palantir able to uh, warrant a higher valuation than 40 times sales than it is now? And you know, is someone else going to pay more than you are, than more than 40 times sales? Because that's for most people, I imagine that's the reason that they're investing. They want this thing to go up. They want to make a profit. Um, and even on the forward basis, so for example, as we saw, they're expecting for 2021 something over 30%. So let's, if we assume they hit that 30% target, that would mean 30% on about 1 billion would be about 1.3 billion. And at the market cap right now, that would mean that they would be trading at about 30, 31 times forward sales, forward sales. Uh, forward revenue so that's still fairly high you know that means that's expect you know their their guidance for the kind of revenue that they're gonna have a year from now that's they're talking about full year 2021 that's what this guidance here represents for the full year 2021 so and that's not guaranteed to happen there's you know um, they are they do have so far according to the the data that we have available we have uh, two years of lots of full data you know you can check you can go to the SEC and see this yourself and um, they do have uh, so far fairly explosive growth, but you know there there are things that could happen. Um, they might not be able to secure clients next year. It's a chance, but you know so there is risk involved. It's just there's risk involved. I just want you guys to be aware of that because you don't want to go into this without knowing the risks. So, all right. Uh, and by the way, this is um, just for. I have to say this is for entertainment purposes only. Um, this is not investment advice. Make sure you do your research before you buy or sell or take any action with investments or any companies including Palantir and that's you know that's why we're talking about this so that is something to think about they are it is not it's not like a, a steal at these numbers uh, but that said I am long Palantir currently uh, I did enter at a, a lower price so I paid less than 40 times sales I, ent I I opened a position not long after the direct listing sometime during October so um, what we're talking about right now is considering a purchase right now, going long right now at 40 times sales as it stands as of yesterday's close. So that's something to think about. Um, as far as um, the balance sheet, the balance sheet looks fine uh, as it stands as of the end of the quarter there. This is uh, from September. They have $1.8 billion in cash um, and some other current assets that brings it up to about $2.4 billion. So there's 1.48 billion cash, and their current liabilities are just just over half of their cash. So they have no problems. You know, no, I, I'm not worried about them. You know, going bankrupt or anything like that in the short term. Everything looks fine there. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of time for them to meet their performance uh, expectations, and if they can't, they still will have time to uh, strive for them because they do have a lot of cash with which to fund their operations, even if they can't find a way to go profitable uh, soon. And that's, remember that, this company has not yet turned a profit. As we can see, you know, there there's no earnings per share here, or there, there's no PE because they don't have any uh, accounting profit. Uh, they were almost uh, pro pro positive on profit for quarter three, but um, not quite. And so one of the things that people were talking about with that, I just wanted to point that out. So um, for quarter three uh, of 2020, 
the as since the company went recently uh, public with the direct listing, they did recognize a non-cash charge of about seven hundred and seventy million dollars, and that really brought their EPS down. So if you were to, if you would look at some financial sites like, uh, you know, the a lot of the regular ones, Yahoo Finance or whatever, they're going to show a large negative EPS print for Palantir, like a, that they lost a lot of money. But this is what this is is it's a compensation stock compensation to employees of the firm, probably mostly executives. You know, you can we can you could read the details here and see what it is, and that's not cash that the company is spending. That's not cash that the company is losing. But it, according to GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, they do have to deduct that from their revenue. They have to include it as an expense, and so it does show up as a negative. Uh, but even even if we exclude that item, and that's what uh, Palantir has done, they uh, when they talk about their non-GAAP operating income, this right here, the reason they're talking about that is they're excluding items like this. They're excluding this item, for example. They're not counting the 760, 770 million dollars in um, stock compensation because that should not be a recurring item. Maybe there will be smaller pieces in the future. That's that's that's. It depends on the contracts with their executives and employees, um, but it's 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 the reason that they're showing they're showing some kind of operating income here on a non-GAAP basis. But um, so that they need to get profitable more in the future, though. You know, we, that's that's what we're banking on here. So overall, I think that uh, it's it's a very interesting company, but you have to do have to be aware of these things if you're considering going long right now. Uh, the other thing to worry about or to pay attention to is the fact that uh, you may have heard Palantir is going to have a share lockup expiration after their fourth quarter 2020 fourth quarter earnings report is issued a few days later uh, and I will get the exact date later we'll have more clarity on that as the as the company gets ready to report quarter four earnings uh, about 80 percent of the shares outstanding will become available so what that means is which is fairly common with IPOs and it is a little bit different in the case with this at the direct listing. Uh, only 20% of the shares were tradable on the, the market uh, of the outstanding shares. So that 80% of them were are held by employees of the firm, executives, uh, other stakeholders of Palantir, and they had a contractual obligation not to sell them for a minimum period, which is defined as slightly after the quarter four earnings for 2020 are reported. So. Uh, that's another reason to consider uh, waiting. Uh, if you're if you're thinking of getting into Palantir, investing in Palantir, you may want to wait until after that lockup, because when those shares become available to be sold by the holders, some of them may do so. It's not uncommon that they do, because you know they 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 probably have, uh, they do have a much lower cost basis, and some of them, uh, it's highly possible that they will decide to cash out, take some profit, sell some or all of their holdings, for whatever reason. And um, that could put a downward pressure on the stock. It could become cheaper. It could, you know, it may it may present um, a better entry point. It may present a lower price that you can uh, you accumulate shares of Palantir after February, March, you know, sometime after the quarter four earnings is released. So recall that. Just don't forget about that. That's something to be aware of. So okay. So this is. Uh, I just wanted to give this update. And um, I am long Palantir, just full disclosure there. I, I do think that the company has a pretty bright future. Uh, their, their software is very impressive. You can see a lot of other, this, this is a very, very uh, pretty well covered uh, stock and all the YouTubers, the finance and investing YouTubers, you know, uh, for, for some good reasons. It's, it's very, very uh, exciting uh, software and the solutions and opportunity that they have, you know, there's a, the, as I said, they don't really have a direct competitor because their software is quite unique. And I encourage you to go and read more about their software, educate yourself more in the company before you consider an investment. So that's it for Palantir. I will update more on it and I will have more videos coming out on other interesting stocks, investment opportunities um, in the coming days, weeks, months. Um, I'm just getting started with this channel. So if you could help me out, just go ahead and give a like, subscribe, hit the bell. And I hope that uh, you will uh, enjoy your time here, and Happy New Year. And please, just uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. And I'll see you guys soon. All right, take care.